Welcome to the Great World of Flash. So this tutorial is um, uh, going to be a part of a list of tutorials. This being the first uh, in a new set of tutorials I'm doing on web design. So these set of tutorials are, are going to give you the basic tools that will help you design your first web page. So I have everything, all the software, so I have uh, the Design Premium CS4 which comes with uh, Photoshop, uh, Flash, Dreamweaver, and um, Fireworks, which uh, I find are the most useful programs that I ever have used to create um, web pages. So I'm starting off with Flash because uh, Fireworks and Dreamweaver are kind of inter interlaced together, so it it'll be good if I discuss those uh, in the later segments when I am discussing actual HTML design. So that's why I'm mentioning Flash first because Flash is the one that's kind of separate from all of the other ones. So the idea here is that I'm going to be posting tutorials to the best of my abilities anytime I have time from my schedule. So you might see like a Flash tutorial that's out now and then you might see something out Oh, it's like six months from now. And that'll just depend on how much time I have uh, on posting these tutorials. So, please be patient. And uh, if uh, if you want, you can subscribe. Or, even better, if you want to learn on your own, if I have stopped posting tutorials, uh, there's a lot of great web pages. Uh, there's learnflash.com. There's tzag.com. And uh, the Adobe site itself has great documentation on how to use all the software, although it is quite uh, cumbersome to read. So, let's start. Let me get you uh, in into um, a new document. I'm going to use Action Chip 3. If you want, uh, or if you have experience with Action Chip 2, and you feel more comfortable using that, uh, go ahead and do that. But it's not much different. There's just new features other than that. Same syntax and everything else will work the same. So I'm just going to create a new Action Trip 3.0 document. And just so you can see this uh, uh, stage better, I'm going to go into the properties, which is on the right side in CS4. Unlike in CS3, where it would be on the bottom over here, on the bottom over here, you have your motion editor. Or, uh, or you might not have anything at the bottom. You'd have to customize it to your preference. So th that's that's one of the great things about the CS4 edition that you can customize based on whatever you like. So uh, you might find that uh, I'll get stuck in points of the tutorial because uh, I'm not quite familiar with this uh, layout as uh, some things have changed in um, Flash. So bear with me with through those uh, segments where I might uh, find myself searching for some buttons or tools. So, uh, just to give you a warning. So, uh, as you can see, the properties on the right, if you just go down to properties here, and then in stage, you see the background color is white at the moment. Click on it, uh, make it black, and you can see the stage color has changed. Over here, what we have is a zoom, so how far away from from the screen you're actually seeing stuff so if you're working with like large image documents and uh, you have things flying around animations flying out everywhere something exiting the stage and it's not programmed animation so you will use something like uh, 200 per per uh, my bad 25 percent so you can get a better view of the whole screen but for the most part of the tutorial I will be using 100 percent zoom and uh, I highly doubt you'll ever have to go into 800. So that's that. So these we'll discuss later, and um, that's in the future tutorials. But for now, let's just go ahead and dig right into the tools. So this here is just your regular cursor. This a cursor is to select uh, vertices or points along a line that you can either create or uh, that are pre-existent and basically you can modify those points moving them up and down will change the shape and okay this is a new feature which is uh, for 3d shapes which um, we won't get into but it's uh, good to mention that uh, the flash can now do 3d objects 
Uh, here we have the free transform tool, basically resizing and uh, uh, just general transformations you can do to images. And the gradient transform tool, basically to switch gradients around and uh, manipulate gradients within uh, a vector drawing. The lasso tool, if you've used an image editor, you know what that's all about. Uh, your regular text tool, your pen to draw lines, the line tool which will itself draw lines, uh, um, the rectangle and there's other shapes too, the primitive, the rectangle primitive tool which you can um, use to make rounded edged rectangles, uh, the pencil, the brush, th these are all very common image editing tools, paint bucket, the color, the eyedropper tool, the eraser, uh, there's a couple of new ones here and here. Uh, you're grabbing your magnification and basically it's just a simple set of tools that you should be comfortable with if you've used any image editor. So, uh, let me just show you uh, one of the tools that are might have been a little confusing. The gradient transform tool. So here I've just drawn a box and basically just select the box click on a point and just draw it and then you go to the properties and then and go into the fill I'm just going to choose a gradient here so as you can see now it has a gradient uh, now if I want to edit this gradient I'm going to go in here select the gradient transform tool and if I s pick on that little corner over there and rotate it you can see that the gradient has just moved so now it's white to black from here to here. Now I can change it around so it's black to white from this side to this side. And one more time. And that's all that tool does. So now that we have that settled, uh, free transform tool, basically sizing objects, eraser, Oh look, you've just erased a hole. Um, text. Click on anywhere. Type. And you have text on the screen. Then we have this, this tool, which can, if you change to green, it'll make it solid green. The paint bucket, the eyedropper tool. See, it changes the color, so whatever color you'd like to set something to, and you don't know the exact hex code for it, you can always use this. And last but not the least, is this tool right here. Oh, wait, this is not the last tool, my bad. The pen tool, it's a really powerful mechanism. And I've just created an uberly awkward shape but it's okay now okay I can't fill in um, an area which has no fill so that's the reason I couldn't fill it so now that you have this you can use the special selecting tool and modify points as so now I know my explanation isn't very good on this at the moment, but when we actually get to the practical examples, it'll all make sense. Alright, so it's all good now.